here we're doing a quick audio video check if you can see me please go ahead and put yes in the questions box hey debbie good to see you thanks katie hey aj hi right, regina perfect all right grab a sip of water um so folks for today for this webinar this is absolutely going to be interactive um we're not just talking at you for an hour we're going to be workshopping this with you so make sure you have a pen and a piece of paper if you have that put me in the chat box if you don't have that yet give me a question mark okay good um while the the numbers of people who are jumping who are attending are are ju jumping quickly i'm curious what are you hoping to get out of today there's a lot of things you could be doing with your time right now what would make this a great investment for you Put that in the chat box. Dash, come here. You guys can meet the newest family member if he comes over here. Hey, buddy, come here. Come here. No regrets. Mm -hmm. Life. Do 60 minutes and 30 minutes. Lynn, I will talk really, really, really fast and do it. No, no, that's not going to happen. <laughs> clarity on the right things. Perfect. Getting clarity on how to spend my time. Uh, Trisha, I would suggest it's clarity on how to invest it. Simple shift in language means makes all the difference. Getting stuff done. By the way, the puppy ran away. It's a puppy, in case you were wondering. Focus on scaling. Okay, perfect. All right, well, I'm gonna hit the record button so people can watch this later if they, oh, it looks like it is recording, so we're good to go. All right, everybody, well, welcome to our monthly webinar. Usually, we do this once a month. We do it live. We also record it for people to be able to watch this later. And the purpose of this is usually to bring on a best-selling author whose book is aligned with the one thing to help you better live the one thing. Yet when we sat down during our content meeting to have a conversation about what would actually bring the most value to you, we have heard consistent challenges that people are having at this stage in their life. And really, it comes down to how do we build a life that you love? How do you, how do you build that kind of life? And how do you make sure that you're going to live without regret? Because I know personally what it feels like to be so focused on climbing the ladder and not ask the question, is it leaning up against the correct wall? How many of you, when I say that, does that resonate with? If so, put me in the chat box. Yeah, I, I know where you're coming from. And I think for a lot of us, when, when COVID hit, I don't know about you. I remember driving away from the office for the last time thinking, oh, I'll probably be back in the office in three weeks. <laughs> uh, yeah, short-sighted there. For a lot of us, we thought that this was going to be um, a season of life. And for many of us at this point, it really has become the new normal. And now that we have been working remotely, for many of us um, going into either some of, I'm curious, how many of you, when you look at your job moving forward, if you plan on being fully virtual moving forward, put virtual. If you plan on being in a hybrid role, put hybrid. And if you plan on being fully back in the office, put office. Okay, I see majority hybrid, lots of virtual. I see some office, but it's definitely the minority. So it looks like hybrid is the, the, the leader. For those of you that put hybrid, if it's five days a week, what percentage of the week do you expect to be virtual? So if it was three out of five, that would be 60%. Two out of five would be 40%. So you're just taking the number and multiply by two. 90, 70, three days out of the week, 40% of the time, 70% of the time. Okay, so most people, it's looking like about half the week you're going to be out half the week. You're going to be in office. Okay, great. Um, that, that's great for us to know. Here's why this matters. When the pandemic hit, we had a very purposeful conversation about your environment has changed. Your goals may have gotten thrown out the window. Now is the time to be purposeful about who's the person I want to become and what habits can I form that if I formed those habits would allow me to decide my future. We did that when the shutdown happened. Now we're in the position where all the companies that we work with, they have declared their future of work strategy, whether they're going back to the office, whether they're doing hybrid, whether it's fully virtual. And now we're realizing that we have to be intentional again. 
We have to be purposeful in how we have to show up in the world so that we have the right habits that decide our future. If we are passive in this, the odds of you going down a path toward regret go way, way, way up. And frankly, this this all started with Gary. I mean, way back when he was starting to build Keller Williams, he told himself the story that the path to building a great company was for him to be the first one in the office, the last one out. He hustled, he grinded, he prided himself on having the strongest work ethic. And he developed some serious health concerns, some health issues. And he realized, holy smokes, if I do not change the way that I view my time, I'm going to end up materially having regrets in my life. And that's where his actions shifted that ultimately led to the one thing, realizing that it wasn't just about working long, working long, working hard, muscling, muscling your way to a result and actually cheating yourself out of living a life. It was about being as efficient and as effective during the hours that you work and at a pre-prescribed time, actually shutting it down and going and living a life. And by making that fundamental shift to how he viewed his time, starting to invest it more often than he spent it. The company has grown and not only does he have an extraordinary organization and has had, has he had an extraordinary career, he's also living an extraordinary life. And I love what he said, a life worth living might be measured in many moments, but one way that stands above all the others is living a life of no regrets. Hey, Jeff, now, yes, Kaylin. We can't see your screen. What? Jiggle, I what? Know. Awesome. Can you can tell can you guys tell that details aren't my one thing? There we go. Thank you, Kaylin. <laughs> uh, that's Gary, by the way. So this is this is the quote she shared. A life worth living might be measured in many ways, but one way that stands above all others is living a life of no regrets. Today, folks, we're gonna ask you some questions that are gonna force you to go internal and be honest with yourself. That's that's where the growth is. So here's the first one. How many of you feel like if you do not make a change, ultimately the path will lead to regret in at least one area of your life? If so, put me in the chat box. Yeah, and, and I appreciate the, the transparency. This There is zero judgment in this, but Folks, we're workshopping this today because we want you to go internal to figure out, okay, based on the conversation today, what do you think our expectation is? How many things do you think we expect you to walk away with that you will commit to putting into action? Put that number in the chat box or the questions box. How many things? That's right, one. Today will either be an investment or an expense of your time, depending on if you can get clarity on at least one thing. And if you put that into action, you knock that domino down, it'll start begin to unleash the domino effect in that life that puts you on the path to living a life that you love rather than the life of regret. So out of curiosity, um, let's, let's talk about what we're gonna learn today. First, um, we have to address the biggest barrier that's keeping you stuck that leads to future regret. We've got to focus on what's missing from your life that's essential to achieving your goals and how you can actually go about getting it. And the one thing you can do this year to make your five-year and someday goals actually possible. So that's the high-level 20% agenda for today. When, I know for me personally, um, I've done a lot of introspection lately. I'm curious, how many of you does this resonate with? How many of you feel like since the pandemic, you're actually working more hours than you were previously, and you're really struggling to separate your work life from your personal life? If so, put a number one in the questions box. Isn't it interesting, all the companies we work with, we've heard this consistently that it's like, oh yeah, they're, they're seeing their family more, but at the same time, because we no longer have the commute or don't have the commute as often, um, we're actually just working more hours. And we're really struggling when, my family's on the other side of that door, struggling to transition from work to personal life when it literally takes me five seconds to transition. It's not enough time. I'm curious, how many of you have begun to question why you do what you do? Because deep down, you actually feel like you're meant for more. If so, give me a number two in the chat box. 
Mm-hmm. Yeah, there was a study that showed that roughly 40% of people right now are actively looking for their next opportunity. It's kind of crazy to think about. How many of you, um, because you're unclear of what the future looks like, you actually feel stuck? If so, give me number three in the, in the question box. Um, we get it. And that's the purpose of the conversation today, is how do we put a plan in place so that we can be as efficient and as effective during the hours that we work, that we can shut it down at a pre-prescribed time, that we actually can separate work life from personal life and have a transition between the two, that we actually can explore if you're in a role right now that's deep down just not filling your soul, how do you actually go about navigating that journey to figure out what might you be destined to do? And what are those dominoes that you can start lining up? And ultimately, you're not in control of everything. We cannot give you certainty. But what we can do is at least help you feel like you understand the dominoes that you can start knocking down to move forward so you don't feel as stuck. The thing that when, when Kaylin and I were chatting about this is I think it's important to acknowledge that you're not the problem. I'm curious, um, how many of you were taught in school how to ask big questions, to navigate through uncertainty, to put your own plan in place, to cast a vision? How many of you learned that in school? I didn't. When I think about my personal education experience, I was taught to have the answers. They, they gave us the content, we were asked to memorize it, and we were assessed and we were graded on our ability to memorize and have the answer. And mistakes were not a good thing. If you made a mistake, you got a lower grade, which we were told would, would possibly impact our future. You won't get into as good of a school. You won't be able to get, into, get as good of a job. It might affect your ability to deliver a great quality of life for your family. But what, here's what's interesting. You know what makes us successful in the real world? Mistakes, failing forward as fast as possible. And I don't know about you, but going down the journey of living the one thing, it is not about having the answers. It is about asking big questions and searching for those answers, searching past the wall of I don't know, so that when a situation hits like pandemic hits, your business plan is dead, what do you do? You go, great question. Let me search for that answer and you search, and you get a sense of clarity. You put the plan in place. You start taking action, not knowing if it's absolutely the right thing or not, but you at least can feel good knowing that you have clarity on the dominoes that you can knock down, and you earn the right every single week to look up and revise your plan because you're going to have some successes and you're going to have some mistakes. I just find it so interesting that the fundamental things that we um, – how we had to operate to succeed in school are the opposite of how we succeed in life. And so I think it's important for us to give ourselves a break. We talk a lot about having graceful accountability. Like we preach accountability, it's a core value of ours, but it's also about being graceful with it. Not beating yourself up when things do not go your way. Not beating yourself up when you feel stuck and you're unclear of what the next step is. Give me yourself some grace that this is a stepping stone and it's actually going to serve you in getting where you want to go. I'm curious, how many of you in your life have ever had an experience that in the moment you um, perceived it as negative? But when you reflect back on it now, you're so grateful for it because it got you to where you are today. If you can resonate with that, put me in the chat box or the questions box. I'm curious, what's an example of that? I was literally thinking this morning about, I was having a chat with a, a VP of sales for a medical device company. So of course it brought me back to my medical sales days. And I thought about the first device I sold and the product that I had, like just didn't have the opportunity for me that I wanted over the long term. So it, that, and I, in the moment I hated it. I hated the fact that I didn't have this other product that had a higher ceiling in terms of income opportunity, hated it. But that gap is what compelled me to switch companies. And had I not switched companies, I would have never walked into a national sales meeting where Jay Papsan walked on stage, which led to this opportunity here. So in the moment, like I look back and I am so grateful <laughs> that I didn't have that other product because I probably wouldn't be here today. What's that for you? Job loss, 
moving all the way across the country. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Yeah. So here's where we're going with this. Um, the real problem, if we really have to boil it down, there's a few things. Um, most people are missing one, they're missing clarity. Steve Jobs, when he came back as CEO of Apple from 1997 to 1999, he took the company from 300 and active pro 350 active projects down to 10. He literally shut down 340 initiatives. They were already up and running, let alone saying no to all the other shiny objects that popped up. Apple went on to become one of the most valuable companies in the world. Most of us don't actually have a problem saying no. We have a problem knowing what to say yes to. And especially in this moment, we talk about living a life that you love. Most people really are missing clarity on what they want or how they get it. Like if you were sitting down with your friends and they said, what do you actually want out of life? How many of you would be able to go boom and give the answer? Give me a one if yes, give me a two if no. See, I see a lot of no's, I see some twos, awesome. So clarity step one. Second is accountability. How many of you have ever set a goal, got to the end of the year, realized you didn't achieve it, and told yourself, I'll do better next year? If so, put me in the chat box. I've done it. That's not how we roll here. When we set goals, we understand it's not about the result, it's about being appropriate in the moment. And if we realize we are not on track to achieve our results, what do we do differently? What do we do? Or what should you do if you were actually living the one thing at the highest level? You ask, what's one thing I can do differently? Right? It's that graceful accountability. Um, a lot of people are private about their goals. They don't want to be public because they're worried that if they share them publicly, that they'll be judged if they don't achieve them. Um, and so they, 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 their goals aren't actually goals. They're hopeful aspirations. They're dreams that they hope might become a reality, but they don't use it as a compass to inform the person they need to become today. How they have to show up today to be in alignment with their goals and not out of alignment. So we lack clarity, we lack accountability, and ultimately we lack support. How many of you, if you're being honest with yourself, you might have clarity on a goal that really matters to you, but if you look at the people you actually spend the most time with, they bring more resistance than they do momentum. Give me a one if that resonates, two if it doesn't. Okay, totally fair. I've struggled with all of these. Um, for me, prior to co-founding this company, I was in medical device sales. You know, I've always found myself to be a high achiever. I've always been that person that hold, that had goals. I've always achieved those goals. But then um, I get into relationship with Gary and Jay and I see a whole different level. Because all of a sudden they literally hand me this system that is the surprisingly simple truth behind extraordinary results. And they tell me your job is to go and live it. Live it first yourself so you can share and empower others to begin their journey. It was an interesting aha, because I, I feel like I achieved more than I've ever achieved. But I've heard Gary say something, which is that no one succeeds alone. And what I realized is I could only go so far when I was pursuing this myself. If ultimately I did not enlist the support of the people that I did life with, I was always facing resistance. I can only achieve so much if my partner in life, if Amy is not actually on board. I can only achieve so much if my closest friends or my mentors or my coaches are on board. And it got to the point, I'm a part of a mastermind called Front Row Dads, where I, we're a group of businessmen who identify as being family men with businesses, not businessmen with families. And when I first enrolled, I realized that wasn't me. I was a businessman with a family, not a family man with a business. And that became a major focus for me for several years. How do I become the type of person who at an identity level identifies as being a family man who happens to have a business and not the other way around? And I remember a year ago declaring on a webinar like this, it's happened. 
I am a family man with a business, not a businessman with a family. How many of you have heard me talk about this on the podcast or on a webinar? If so put me in the questions box. Then something interesting happened. Um, Daphne, who is my little mini me, she said something to me this year. Um, I got out of a meeting middle of the day and she said, she asked, Daddy, is it a safe place to say something to you? And I said, yes. And she said, Daddy, your job is more important than we are to you. It's, it's hitting me all over again. It's like a dagger. Dagger to the heart. I have been so purposeful in trying to become the type of person I wanted to become, all to realize that um, I've only made that change in my mind. But one of the things that I say to my team is um, communication is the way that it's received. It's not the intent. I frankly don't give a crap what you like. Well, it's not true. I care what your intent is, but we're accountable. If, it, if your communication is not landing, if it's not being received, you are accountable for making the changes and own the reception. And then this, what I just realized is, okay, I've shifted my identity, but it had, I have not yet gone far enough with them. And this is when, you know, we talk about in the one thing, the three commitments, one of them is living the accountability cycle. When life happens, victims go to sh blame, shame, and justification. Accountable people ask, what can I do differently? They own it and they move on. Out of curiosity, how many of you have kids? If so, put me in the questions box. Eight-year-olds are so smart. I know, I know. A little too smart at times. Last night, I'm telling her to go upstairs, and she's pu just pushing back. I'm like, Daphne, just stop pushing back. She goes, Daddy, you told me you admire my persistence, and that's what's going to make me successful. So I'm going to persist until I succeed. And I was like, caveats, honey. <laughs> Don't push now. Don't push now. God, she listens too much. Two of their adults now out of the state, two and a half year old, two cats. <laughs> there you go, Richard. At least they don't push back. How many of you deep down are, I know what your intent is. How many of you it, do you believe that your actions are saying that your work is more important than your family is? If so, give me a number one. How many of you, if we followed you around with a camera, would your actions say that job is more important than family? Again, safe place, no judgment. I mean, I'm airing my laundry in front of all of you. Um, and I do this because deep down, we're all on our own path of mastery because that's the purpose of today. How do we actually design a life that we love versus go down a path toward regret? See. Natalie said no longer. Congratulations, good for you. Hmm. So here's where I went from here. Um, ton of bricks to the chest. I asked, okay, I'm gonna own the perception. What's one thing I can do differently? And that's when I came back to that FM Alexander quote, people do not decide their futures. They decide their habits and their habits decide their futures. So what's one habit I can form that as a result of doing so would make my daughter feel like she's more important than my job. How does a kid spell love? Put your answer in the questions box. T-I-M-E, that's right. And so I asked the, the question, what's the one thing I can do? And what it really came down to was realizing there, I have opportunities every day when my kids ask if I can play and my default is, no, I'm doing the dishes. No, I'm finishing up this thing. I had to say yes, just once a day, just once a day when my kids asked, daddy, can you play? I would say yes. And I started knocking the dominoes down. I started putting X's on the 66 day challenge calendar. And by knocking those dominoes down day after day after day, it put me in the position to realize I'm waiting for somebody else to create the opportunity for me. How might I create the opportunity? And I also noticed that I could say yes and I could sit down and still actually not be present. 
my mind could be somewhere else. And it lacked the sufficiency to actually achieve the result that I wanted. How many of you understand that? Like you've knocked a domino down, but realized it wasn't sufficient enough. It didn't have enough power to actually knock the other dominoes down. That's what I realized. And so I asked, got stood me right back up to ask, okay, well, what's one thing I can do that would make getting on track easier or unnecessary? And it came down to, I'm staring at the door that separates my office from the family room. Before I walk through that door, I have to consciously visualize myself walking into the room and being present with my family. That began to shift things. That then wasn't me waiting for my children to come to me and say, daddy, can you play? It's me going to them and saying, guys wanna play? It led to me when I would ask that question, actually being present, which began to unleash the dominoes. Now, full transparency, I still got a long way to go. I am still on that path, but I'm also committed to it. So why do you think I share this with you? Why do you think? Put your answer in the questions box. Why are we investing our time talking about this? Why do you think we're investing time talking about this? Need to identify the first domino because it's about making adjustments. Yep. No regrets. Clear on what matters. There you go. So we're going to go through a little bit of an exercise. Um, I want to ask you some questions. And this is where you're going to need a pen and a piece of paper. So what I call the pen dance is when you take a pen or a pencil, you hold it up to the camera, you make a dance and dance. Cool. Um, pen and paper. I'm going to play a little bit of music and I want to get you some time or give you some time. First question is, where am I lacking clarity right now? When you think about a life that you will love, where are you lacking clarity right now? Start to journal your answers. Let's see how many different ideas you can come up with. Then when you've exhausted that, I want you to ask the question, where am I missing accountability? And when you're done journaling your answers to that, who am I lacking the support of that if I don't get could lead to regret? I'm gonna play a little bit of music for you. Go ahead, start your. Thank you. 
How many of you need more time? So give me a number one. If you're done, give me a two. Okay, more time. Well, then let's see what question's coming up next. Or what song? Nope, not that one. I like this one. Hey. I'm going to give you 30 more seconds. <laughs> For those of you that are done, start putting what you've discovered about yourself in the questions box. What have you discovered about yourself? So the question is, what have you discovered about yourself? Just beginning to journal these questions, and my eyesight stinks. So here we go. Need to narrow my focus. I need to give myself a pass and validate my excuses. <laughs> I think accountability needs to be one of my annual three words for 2022. Love that, Stephanie. Um, I don't have a big why. Okay. Thank you, Sherry. I need a tougher accountability partner. I understand that. Accountability points to me. I need a coach. Mm -hmm. I'm lacking on clarity on future career direction, mostly related to my family, and I should stay in our current location or move out of state. Mm -hmm. Not only do I need, but I want to find my tribe of like-minded people to create my integrated life. Love that, Natalie. I feel overwhelmed. I miss clarity. I'm missing clarity in just about every aspect of life. I understand, Shane. Need to be clear with my coach as to what is important to me. It's not just about business and business related goals. Yeah, absolutely. My time is valuable and I can pay others where I am not needed. Yeah, absolutely true. Absolutely true. Well done, folks. Thank, thanks for playing all out. Um, everything we do is very purposeful and it's by design. And I don't know about you, how many of you know you should probably slow down more? and have some thinking time to ask yourself the questions that you should be asking, but you just don't do it. So give me a one in the questions box. Yeah, well, if, if we can help facilitate that for you, then that that's it's what we're here for. So I wanna tie this back to our goal setting framework because when we talk about how do you build a life that you love and live without regret, our models are our models. I mean, this is, this is what Gary, lived his life by, he systemized it, and we have taken this around the world. It really starts with your core values. How many of you have done the core value exercise with us? If so, give me a one. If not, give me a two. So we created, if you can see me, if you can see my camera, we created this core value deck um, where we did research on 140 different core values. And we facilitated an experience where you actually narrow it down to three. And I actually had the chance last week, I, I flew out to Fort Bragg in North Carolina and I had a chance to do this for a group of um, Green Berets and Army Rangers about what their core values are so that they can actually have a sense of purpose for what life will look like after the teams and after the service. And it was, it was just an extraordinary experience for people to really sit back and say, hey, I, I have my logical mind. It's the goals I set. It's the things I say I do. And every single one of us has had that moment in our life where our mind's telling us to do one thing, but our heart's kind of pulling us in a different direction. How many of you have had that? If so, put me. Or consciously, your mind's like, yeah, go do this. But deep down, you just feel like you should be going in a different direction. It's your values. It's your core values. Every single one of us has 
a top three core values that drive every decision we make. And when we make decisions that are in alignment with those values, we feel like we're on fire. And when we make decisions that are out of alignment with our values, we feel it. We feel it. So before we even talk about what your goals are, you have to know why you do what you do. For that person who said, um, I'm missing my big why, right here. Why are you wired the way that you are wired? And then once you know that, you can then look at the seven circles. This is page 114 of the book. Seven most important areas of your life, your, your spirituality, because every single one of us is going to wonder why we are here. Then your physical health, because if you don't have your body, where are you going to live? Then your key relationships, your job, or your personal life, your key relationships, your job, your business, your finances. And we brainstorm what would extraordinary look like? What would be a life that I love when it comes to spirituality? What would physical health look like? What would an extraordinary personal life look like? Meaning the hobbies that you have. How about the key relationships? What would extraordinary look like? And just like we did here, pen dance, you give yourself the space to search for the answers. And it's not that you're going to have crystal clarity because here, I will prove this to you. I will show you my driver's license. Notice the name. Where's the name? Or say my name. Name does not say Miss Cleo. I personally don't have a crystal ball about my future, but I can ask the big question. I can search for those answers and get some directional clarity that can at least guide my focus. And that's how you set your someday goals is you brainstorm about what extraordinary would look like in these various categories. And these are all the things you could pursue. But then we identify the 20% ones that you should and we list them in order of priority. Those become your someday goals. And from there, you can then imagine looking back on your life and asking, okay, well, where would I need to be in the next five years to feel like I'm on track for that someday vision? By the way, not an easy question to ask. A lot of people think, I don't know, and then they give up thinking. Not you, not you. And once you have that five-year target, all of a sudden, when you ask the question, what do I need to focus on for the next 12, year, 12, 12 months or one year, you don't see all the things that you could do. It's, whew, here's what I've got to focus on in the next year to put me on track for my five years that puts me on track for my someday goals, all in alignment with my core values, with how I'm wired. So that when my mind tells me to do one thing, my heart is in it and it, be, it supercharges everything that I do. And that then flows to your calendar. How do we actually make sure that when you open up your calendar this week, that those appointments that you see, whether they're with yourself or with somebody else, that they're contributing toward a life that you would love and not slowly taking you toward a life of regret? What are you learning so far? When I share all this, what are you learning? And by the way, when I ask, what are you learning? And I ask you to put it in the questions box, that is strategic and it is purposeful. It's going to solidify the lessons. It boosts the retention. You get more value when you have to recall what we have talked about. So purposeful, hold on, back to Clark Kent mode. Be purposeful, entrepreneurial and purposeful. Well said, Peter. We need to slow down to speed up. Ooh, Jill, yeah, good to see you. Narrow my focus to the one thing. Hmm. Ah, I love this. I already know all this, but I need to spend the time to do it. Um, you need to invest the time. All of this is common sense, folks. All we do is we show you how to turn common sense into common application. Mm -hmm. Deprioritize stuff that doesn't matter to the end goal. Well said. I have to. I have to invest more time thinking about this. Absolutely. If I don't document it, it won't get done. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh, it's so good. And then finally, once you have it, this is this is the piece that's missing for that person that said, I, I already know this, but I don't do it. It's then the rhythm for the year. It's how do you actually start to have the relationship with your goals? Just like with a significant other, you do not look at them and say, you're amazing. I could see a life with you. So let's get together in a year and let's hope it goes well. The moment you stop investing in the relationship, you start stop stop growing together, you start growing apart. Same with our goals. How many of you have set goals and then forgot goals? Like you set them, you put it on the PowerPoint slide, 
but you didn't review it. You didn't use it as a compass to guide your daily actions. If so, give me a number one in the chat box. I've been there prior to this company. That's how I rolled. I even framed them. Not only did I print the goals, I framed them. I put them next to my sink. When I brushed my teeth, I visualized those goals. And at the end of the year, I achieved some of them, but a lot of them I went, oh, I'll do better next year. But I didn't because I didn't learn how to establish a rhythm to have a relationship with my goals throughout the year so that when I was off track, I could ask, okay, what's one thing I can do differently? How am I going to change my actions so that I'm in appropriate in the moment? That's, that's, that's how this works, folks. So I wanna walk you through some of the challenges that really stop people from achieving extraordinary results because this, this is simple. Get clarity in your core values. I mean, literally, you can get a deck of cards and, and figure it out in about 15 minutes. Look at the seven circles. Brainstorm what extraordinary looks like someday from now. Recognize that it's not gonna be everything on that list that's a goal. Narrow it to the 20%, set your someday goals. Then figure out where you need to be in five years and one year to be on track. And then you look at your calendar, start time blocking activities, and then review it throughout the year. There you go, there's the keys to success. So why, why don't people do it? Um, first and foremost, how many of you does this quote resonate with? I've been so focused on surviving that I've lost sight of how to envision what I actually want that resonates with you, put me. Mm -hmm. How many of you just feel exhausted? Like you need a break, not one more thing to do. Like, great, Jeff, you just gave me a bunch of things. <laughs> a ton of me's in the chat box. <laughs> yeah, I get it, I get it. How many of you deep down are a part of a plus one and they are not a goal setter? Mm hmm Yeah. How many of you deep down have concerns if your goals aren't the same and what that might mean? That one resonated with me. Amy's not a goal setter and I was scared, you know what, about what if our goals weren't the same? How many of you feel like you are just trying to keep your head above water with the kids, with health? You just, you can't imagine doing this. Yeah, Stephanie said, very scared that our core values and goals don't align. Well, Stephanie, spoiler alert for you. Um, one, for those of you that are, are, are a plus one, that have a significant other, the vast majority of you, your significant other is not a goal setter. If you both are, then you are the exception. You're not the rule. And two, your goals won't be the same. Section at the point. What do they say is the key to a successful marriage? It's one word. What's the key to a successful marriage? Compromise. This is not about you guys having the same goals or the same core values. It's about understanding what each other's core values are and understanding what matters to each other person in terms of their goals so that one, you can be a support for them and not resistance and that you can compromise where you need to compromise. You have your goals, they have their goals, and then there will be your shared goals where you compromise on what that is. And that's all this facilitates. Like I will tell you, Amy and me, like our goal, our, our core values, not the same. Mine are growth, recognition, and impact. Hers are order, safety, and experience. And for years, because we didn't know what our core values were, there was friction. But the moment we understood what each other's core values were, what used to be the cause of, um, of friction became a true catalyst for connection. Order. Like, it drove me nuts that she would be like, no, your water bottle shouldn't be sitting here. It should be sitting over here. Or why didn't you pick that up off the floor? It drove me nuts. I'm like, that's an 80 percenter. I'm a visionary. I'm focusing on my one thing. I'm focusing on the 20 percent. That's an 80 percent priority. But it's order. The moment I understood it as order, it was like, oh, of course not. Safety. Our puppies got out the other day and they were running in the street. My wife had lost it. She was so sad and so upset. One order, our dog who let the dogs out, my children. Safety. Our 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 dogs were running all over and there's cars flying by. It's violating her top two core values. No wonder she was a wreck. 
But the moment I understood what her values were, I could actually meet her with empathy rather than just being like, you're overreacting. I did not show up as the best husband for her because I was unclear how she was wired. The moment I understood that, everything was about to change. This, by the way, is how we do this. Um, how many of you have participated in the goal setting retreat before? It started as a the one thing couples goal setting retreat. Now it is the one thing goal setting retreat for couples and individuals. Yeah, th this is, by the way, is the process that we take you through. The whole thing from the core values to facilitating the experience so that you can imagine the someday, the five year, the one year, and you do it individually. Like if you're doing it with a significant other, you do it individually and then you share your answers with your plus one. Not so that they're the same, but so that you get an insight. And for those of you that do this as individuals or with a business partner, individuals, you go on the process as an individual and you do it. You're doing it with business partners or a team, same exact thing. So this is what this looks like. So for those of you, by the way, if you're saying, okay, I want to actually do this, we do have this coming up. Um, the dates are November 13th and 14th. It is going to be a virtually based, physically enhanced event. We will have thousands of people globally joining us virtually um, as general admission. Then we will have about 100 to 200 people in person for the VIP experience. Um, VIPs will attend live at the Lakeway Resort and Spa in Austin, Texas. Um, for those of you, how many of you are already annual members of Living Your One Thing? If so, put me in the questions box. Perfect. You guys get to join virtually for free. So that's our way of saying thank you for being a member. This is just part of your membership that you get to join us for free. Um, over 70% of the people who attended last year decided to actually join as membership. So if you're not yet a member and that's of interest to you, you do have that opportunity. Um, this is the resort in terms of where we're going to be for those of you that are interested in VIP. Um, I want to share with you the stories of what happens. This is Cheyenne. She's been a huge fan of the one thing and part of the community for years. And her partner, not originally a goal setter. And you can see what she said. She went in with some anxiety as she, as, Connor was not a personal goal setter and he was blown away just at the process and how step by step it helped him organize the life. Um, the combination of the one thing with the goal setting process and doing it with the partner, it's just an amazing experience. This is Kyle. He said it was an extremely valuable to observe how others are struggling with many of the same issues relating to a lack of clarity and direction. If you are lacking clarity and direction, <laughs> you are part of the majority, not the minority. Um, and this just gives you simple steps that you can take to overcome and to have that compass to point you in the right direction. And then Martina's our friend way out in Ireland. She said it would, this just blew her mind. Um, it, get, it helps you ask questions that nobody's ever asked you before. It forces you to think, to think hard. And if you do that work, it actually can become not only one of the most challenging things, but also one of the most rewarding investments that you can do. So few, few things a few questions for you. One, what would be the value if you were actually able to identify your core values so it had a compass for making every making great decisions? What value would that do for you? Put that answer in the questions box. If you actually had clarity on the top three and every decision you had a compass to so made sure when you said yes to something, it was in alignment with your values and you effortlessly said no to the things, it would actually create massive friction for you. Peace of mind invaluable, less frustration, waste of time, incalculable. Yeah. What would be the value if you were able to actually get clarity on what an extraordinary life would look like over the next 10 to 20 years in every area of your life? If you actually had clarity on what extraordinary looks like that far out in the future. I don't know how to say no to anything, so I'll have my time to bake. It's so funny. We baked last night. My kids got very excited. I feel you. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Significance and great legacy, less anxiety. What would be the value if you had a simple set of goals for the next one to five years to be on track? You're just clear. Like These are the things that I've really got to focus on over the next year to five years. Just know I'm on track for that life that I'm going to love. And what would be the value if you were actually able to get the support 
that you desperately need, whether that be from a significant other, whether it be from a boss, coworkers. I, this is the one that landed for me because I'm telling you, I muscled my way to achieve my goals without my wife's support because I did not know how to enlist it. And the moment that I actually learned how to enlist my wife's support, I had I didn't realize I felt like I was dragging this anvil of resistance around. And all of a sudden I just got to set it down and just got to start running. Huge difference. What would be the value if you were actually able to take more time off next year so your batteries were recharged and you could create more memories with the people that matter most? That at a high level, folks, is um, is really what this is about. You know, for me, six years ago, I was a bit lost. I knew I wanted more for my life, but I couldn't tell you what it was. I couldn't tell you where I needed to be. And here Gary and Jay said, just start living the principles. And by just being a practice leader, nothing I teach you here is not something I haven't done. Just by being a practice leader, it has brought so much more clarity on what matters. And frankly, we've achieved things that I didn't even think were possible within five years. And we want that for you. We want that for you very badly. It's why it's why we do this. So for FYI, for those of you who are interested in joining the retreat this year, you got three ways to join. On the left-hand side is the general admission that gives you access virtually to join us. It's 295. Today is the last day, by the way, to get the prices that you see on the screen. Those are our early bird prices. Tomorrow, that ticket jumps 100 bucks. Um, for those of you who are already annual members, you get to join virtually for free. If you're not yet an annual member, you can take that option. Over 70% of people choose that. And for those of you that actually want to join in person you can see vip is 1995 that's about to jump 500 bucks tomorrow by the way um we do have this is the the link if you're interested in this that you can go to it's the one thing.com slash set my goals and that's with the number one in the url the one thing.com slash set my goals and if you're interested you can secure tickets for that today um, we do have a satisfaction guarantee by the way so what that means um if you attend virtually and you decide that you don't think you got your values worth, you just email us, we'll give you your money back. We did that last year, um, we're gonna offer it again. For those of you that choose to take the VIP option, um, we have you have until September 30th. If you need to change your mind with the stuff that's going on with COVID, you have until September 30th to, to back out on that and you can join us virtually, or if that's just not a fit for you, that's fine as well. So my question for you is what questions do you have? This is the time where we get to open it up. Um, and ad address your specific questions that you might have, whether it's around the goal setting process, whether it's around getting more clarity about the future. We wanna make sure that we have some time to invest. And for, while the questions come in, I asked Kaylin to share a little bit about her experience. So we'll give you a few minutes for the questions to come in. Um, Kaylin, what's been your experience going through this? So I have to say the goal setting retreat is a game changer. So for me, this uh jeff actually click the photo the next photo um Mama this is a photo of me and my cute family <laughs> and the truth is though for most of my adult life i i was not surrounded by my loved ones and cute cats i was really too busy being busy i was so busy i was not a goal setter i was a high achieving yes woman and a chronic overachiever i was a doer i was a get stuff done and the kind of person that people relied on to juggle their place for them and um, I was proud of that. I really was. I was proud that I could get everything done and I was praised for it. I never under delivered on other people's priorities, but that's the thing. It was other people's priorities that I never under delivered on. I had no idea what an extraordinary life looked like to me. And that was, um, I think you get so much in the habit and the routine and then people expect you to say yes. And for me, that was my story. And I was exhausted because while I was delivering for other people, I was really, I mean, my personal life, I, it took a major hit. I don't remember really sleeping much in my 20s because I worked so much. I didn't nourish my body very much well. I did not take care of myself. And um, I missed so many family holidays. I, I can't even tell you how many times I mentioned, you know, I'm so busy right now. It's just not, it's not a good season. I was full of excuses when really I was so caught up in being busy. Um, fast forward, I get a job at the one thing. And I remember submitting my application and Jeff calls me no later than 15 minutes. He was in a talent time lock, being productive, focused on his one thing. And I 
didn't know exactly what I was getting into, but I knew that there was this promise of a different way. And if I could help other people do the thing that I needed to accomplish, um, that seemed like a really great life. So I jumped in. Jeff and Jay were showing me this way. They were showing me the things to do. And I followed that formula and started to practice the practice of thinking in order of priority. Practice the practice of really saying no. Um, and I started to become a different perfect person because what you practice, you become. Um, I started asking just different questions. Who's the person I wanna come become? Who's the partner a relationship deserves? And who's the mother I'm striving to be? Um, this is the life that I have now. This is my cute baby. This is Wilder. And when I started living the one thing, I actually started imagining what extraordinary looked like for me. Not what it looked like for me to follow through on other people's goals. Not what it looked like for me to um, help other people live a big life while I got lost and just kept doing the same thing over and over again. So I would, I would really encourage you to ask yourself, what does an extraordinary life look like to me? And if you hit a wall, which I did the first time I asked it, um, push through the wall. For me, the goal setting retreat was the first time that I actually started to exercise that muscle in a way where I had Brent, it, Brent and I spent a weekend away and suddenly we started to have conversations that I'd never had before. I started to get clarity on what our life could look like because we started to give words to it. We started to write it down. We started to imagine it. And this little baby is part of our family and our life that we have is a result of just thinking big about what's possible. And um, it's been such a gift. So as you consider the goal setting retreat, um, it's so much more than just setting goals. I guess that's the thing is it's not just a typical goal setting retreat. It really is redefining what's possible for you and redefining what's possible for the person you can become. Yeah. yeah. So Jeff, I see a lot of questions here. You want to join me? Yeah, I do. I do. Um, so why don't you play question thrower passer and I'll, I'll answer. Perfect. Um, let me get through because I was I was busy telling my story. Got it. Um, there was one question um, people asked here. Um, they wanted to see. Let me get through this. Boom, boom. Hold on. Go oh, there. You go. Um, so this is the URL again because some people were were asking okay. for that. Okay. Um, virtual. So Kaylin, what are the options if they're not available all of the 13th and on the 14th in terms so of viewing? Yeah, it's a great question. We're broadcasting live that weekend. And um, it's a great time to time block and be there and with the community. And if you can't make it for that retreat that retreat weekend or only parts of it, everything is recorded. And we upload the recordings as soon as possible. We basically process them so that you can then continue to watch them. And when you either join the membership or um, get your ticket, you actually have access to those recordings through the end of 2021. Perfect. Great question. Perfect. Um, and, and, and just to, to drive a point home, if we tie this back to the purpose of, of today, oh, I'm not actually sharing my screen when I said, here's the URL, super helpful, Jeff. Um, if you want to have a life that you love, it does not just come by waking up and taking it one day at a time. That is not how you get to where you want to go. Because otherwise you're saying yes to things that seem attractive today. But you can't tell if it's in alignment with a bigger vision for your life or a distraction from it. And so we laid the process out in terms of clarify your core values. Look at the seven circles on page 114. Do the thinking exercise. Turn that into someday goals. Reverse engineer that to five-year goals. Reverse engineer that to one-year goals. Make sure that your calendar reflects those priorities. Those are the steps, folks. But like one of our friends here said is, I already know this, but I don't do it. That's why this exists. So for those of you that are interested in having this facilitated for you at a professional level, that's what this retreat is for. For whether, especially those of you, if you have a significant other and you have no clue how to get them on board, all you gotta do is have them take a seat next to you and we take care of the rest. And they start to go through it and it's just so impactful, so impactful. I mean, for my wife last year, she'd been with me the whole time I've been running this company. Most value she got was last year because that was the year she got clarity on this. It was the year that she actually figured out what her core values were. That's been an absolute game changer for her. And what's so interesting, Jeff, is different pieces of the programming unlock different things for different people. 
And sometimes they unlock different things for the same person over the years. Yep. Every time you come back, you're a new person. One of yep. the um, questions someone asked was, do you have an itinerary to share for the November 13th and 14th? So our itinerary is, a, we start on, basically we are accommodating people all over the globe. Last year we had people join everywhere from Israel to Australia to Austin, Texas, and we were uh, broadcasting from Seattle. So we try to accommodate the best time zones for everybody. Um, we start at 7.30, if you're coming in person, we start at 7.30 a.m. with a VIP mastermind. And while we're masterminding- That's central time. Central time, thank you, thank you, Jeff. And while we're masterminding, everyone at home that's tuning in virtually is getting all their tech check, bumper, bunker prep, grabbing snacks, and um, we go live with programming at 9.30 central time. And that first day, we're going from 9.30 to 4.30. And then the second day, we go from 9.30 to noon. And VIPs, of course, will also get that VIP mastermind in the morning. So we'll hang and have breakfast. Part of the, the awesome part about being there in person is we are, we are creating a lot of opportunities to have community engagement and build relationships. We know it's been a long time and we've done everything we can in this, um, in this VIP setting to limit the number of people they're attending while also uh, making COVID safe arrangements so that people can connect and build relationships like we've very much missed. There you go. So here, we, we had a slide on this. So if you wanna take a picture of this slide, that will show, and Kaylin, is this on the website? It is, it is. So if you go yes. to the one thing.com slash set my goals, that's a great point. Before I started talking, I should have sent you there. Um, the one thing.com slash set my goals, you scroll down a little bit and it say your retreat weekend, and you can see the VIP and the virtual programming outlines there. Yeah. And by the way, folks, um, something that we have just for you guys who are here today, um, for, for the first 25 of you, if you guys do decide to join today, um, which again, it's early bird. Uh, so this is the last day to get the lowest price on tickets. Um, we are going to send core values decks out to the first 25 people that purchase on this webinar. So and we're going to send you two decks, one for you, one if you have a significant other. If you don't have a significant other, it could be one for you and one for somebody you care about. Um, if you are domestic, we'll ship it to you absolutely for free. If you're international by chance, um, we'll sh we will the decks are free, but the, the shipping will be on you. And we're literally just going to look at who the first 25 people were and have them they'll they'll get the decks sent to them for free and that's for the first 25 people so i see a question that came in from frank said i'm looking to transition to the coaching industry from tech i'm just struggling to get clarity on the next steps and moves um what recommendations can be given so i'm going to answer this two ways frank one i'm going to come to you directly and then i'm also going to say if you're interested in making a transition career-wise and you're kind of unsure on what the steps are how this applies um one if in terms of coaching our sister company business maps i would strongly encourage that you talk with them because they can walk you through what steps are to become a coach you can decide if you want to do it inside our world or if you want to do it externally um, on our, if you go to the just the one thing.com at the top of the page, it'll say grow yourself and you can drop down and just click coaching and you can opt in there. Um, for those of you who are considering a career transition, my sister's in this place right now. She's unclear of what exactly she wants. But that's where, again, when we follow this process, core values, someday goals, five year, one year, down to your calendar, and then establishing a rhythm. What are your values? What actually lights you up? Part of this process and part of this experience is asking yourself the bigger question. It's not like, nope, I'm getting into accounting. Nope, I'm going back to law school. Mm, quit attaching yourself to the outcome. You've got to first and foremost figure out what, what, what are you wired for? And you have to visualize what extraordinary looks like in those circles so that you can then, as you hold up and consider opportunities, you can say, great, here is an opportunity. How does that line up with this? It becomes a compass for those decisions. And the truth is you're gonna to have to make an educated guess based on what seems relevant to you and you fail your way forward. I mean, every single one of us, when we got out of college, most of us don't have the same jobs, but it was having the wrong jobs that helped inform what the right ones were. So hopefully that helps you. Yeah, um, and my you goal is- Right now, just put, I'll see you there in the question box so we can say, hey, we'll see you there. I saw another cool. question, uh, Jeff, that I wanted to cover. Stephanie said, if we do the virtual, what do you recommend we do at home to prep and set the stage? Should we get a hotel room for the weekend? Here's the thing. Uh, what were you gonna say, Jeff? I saw your idea. I'm, I'm passing that baton straight back to you. This is your wheelhouse. 
so here's the thing. We recommend that you get out of your normal environment in order to set your goals because your, your home is full of distractions. And over the past year and a half, for many of us, our home is our workplace. Our, the boundaries in that space can be very confusing. But um, if, you can, if you can make it possible to be in a space that's different from where you, like your actual home, it, it can actually help you stay focused and um, get everything you need. We've got a, we're actually going to post some prep videos that can share with you what you need to do to build that bunker so you don't get to a hotel or get to an Airbnb and say, oh man, I wish I would have brought this. So we'll give you a prep checklist to make sure that you bring what you need. But if it's possible, do it. And if you're on a budget and you got a friend that you can house swap or something like that, there's so many ways to get creative and save money. But if you can get out of your normal environment, it would be excellent. Yep. Um, I just looked down. Um, Rob Baxter, thanks so much. We're looking forward to seeing you. Kay Williams, thank you. Pierre, excited to have you. C. Matheson, we're excited to have you. Alex Shulman, congrats. We're excited to work with you. Um, April Murphy, awesome. So a lot of you are, are, are getting started. Um, I see Crispin said, my goal is to foster a positive, thriving community and to team up with others who have the same vision and values. I'm not sure how to bring that about. Could this workshop be helpful to me in clarifying um, turning the vision to a reality? 100%, Crispin. So I think I've been in this place, by the way. I didn't know the questions to ask myself. And I did not know how to search for the answers past the wall of, I don't know. That's how this is designed, is once you're clear on the values and we do the exercise around brainstorming what someday is, you might just narrow your focus to this and really crystallizing, what does that look like someday? Based on that, where do I have to be in five? Based on that, what do I have to accomplish in the next year? That's when the rubber's really gonna meet the road. And then when we start talking about the GPS and the 411 is you start getting the plan in place to figure out, okay, here's what my calendar needs to look like. So you start knocking the dominoes down every week that matter most. So yeah, I think it, I think it would be an awesome experience for you. I just started my own business last month, congrats, and having a little trouble prioritizing my activities without having the direction um, that a full-time job provides. I'm virtually attending the goal setting retreat with my significant other, but what can I do now to get some direction? Please help, thank you. Um, Carlos, I would start journaling. If you're looking for immediate direction, I would ask the question, fast forward to the end of the year, as in four months from now, how would I know if I'm successful? Fast forward to the end of this year. How will I know if I'm successful? Journal your answers to that. That's going to really crystallize what success looks like in the next four months. And I don't want a laundry list. I, I want you to really narrow it down to like a high level one thing. Like if I did this, this one thing would be the overarching mark of success for me. Get clear on that. That then will give you clarity on what do I have to focus on this month to know that I'm on track? I only got four months. What do I got to knock out this month to be on track? And based on that, what do I have to do this week? So all I'm taking you through right there are the steps of the 411. Annual goals, monthly goals, weekly goals, open up your calendar, time block your priorities. So Natalie, I see your question and I love it. You said, you're asking, have you considered a teen model or do you have one to teach kids in this model? So last year, we actually had several teenagers and families attend together. Uh, Jeff, what was the episode number that we shared at one story? Ooh. Oh, um, with John and Kate? Yeah, with John and Kate. I don't remember. Check. We'll, we'll look it up. Maybe I'll put it in the notes. Um, it's pretty remarkable because kids, for kids especially, like teenagers with high school and choosing a college and the world, they're surrounded by a lot of pressure to making a lot of big decisions. And like Jeff mentioned, they really haven't been trained in school how to make those decisions well. And this retreat has been really powerful for people of all ages. Uh, this, there are, they can cherry pick different um, tools and resources that they'll use. So it really, there's, it's a simple framework that can apply to any person at any stage in their life with any goal that they're working on. So thank you for that question, Natalie. Uh, I'm trying to find it in the podcast feed. <laughs> uh, in the meantime, we'll Becky asked, is the VIP, VIP price the same for your significant other. And yes, all the tickets um, right now, they're the best price possible at the early bird, but they're all priced the same, whether you come with one or two. Okay, um, already signed up. Awesome, congratulations. Love the bonus. Okay. 
All right, I think we're uh, I'm seeing, I'm just scrolling to see if there's any other questions. I'm a CEO of two companies, Pet Lover. Oh, I should go get my puppies. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Mom of four years, I'll be attending the goal setting retreat. What should my partner, one thing newbie, do in advance to get the most out of our retreat? Um, I don't know that I would give any homework to them. So if if this is their first time, I would more reinforce how excited you are to go on this journey with them and why it's so important to you. Because if they're if they're clear on why it matters to you, they're going to show up. They're going to show up. And then it's just about a asking the conversations about where would be the place that we can go through this experience together that would allow us to focus. Like start talking about that, more about I'm so excited. What are you hoping to get out of this? What are you hoping that would make this a great ROI for you? And, and just get more excited about the idea of it. Then they show up, let us take care of the rest. And Jeff, I'd love to add to that in the sense that many, many significant others that have never done this before, their expectation of what they think they're getting into and then what they actually show up for is very different. So really keeping it very low stakes for them, just inviting them to your process so that you can share it. That's what we've seen as the most success. And like Connor said in the in the quote that Jeff shared, he was blown away by how simple it was and having not been a goal setter and knowing nothing about the one thing. Yeah. Um, Pierre says, I'm a one thing Yoda with questions. Thank you. That's very funny. <laughs> um, is there another 66 day challenge this year? Kirsten, yeah, we're going to do it at the at the end of the year um, to, to launch the next year. Peter asked if you can order the core values decks and the t-shirts. Um, I believe those are available on our website. On the are shop. If you go to the one thing.com, uh, and I think it's slash shop or just go to the one thing.com and click shop. Yeah, and you'll you'll see it there. All right, folks. Um, if there's any final questions, we're happy to answer them. Otherwise, we'll give you your time back. Yeah, we appreciate for you you staying late to really get your questions answered because this really is the one thing we do all year. That if you invest in this one weekend, it sets your year up for so much success because you have clarity on what you're trying to achieve from the habits you want to form to the vacations you want to take. Yeah. How to set your goals? Hands down, one of the most powerful things that we do period absolutely um richard congrats excited to have you ben we're excited to work with you uh different richard excited to have you becky super excited todd congrats Lindsay, that's a great way to spell your name love it gary excited to see you on there perfect Jeff, I get so buzzed just even thinking about being with people and setting goals. Last year, it was such a trip to be with all collectively around the world, setting goals together and thinking big. It really was a gift. Yep. And and folks, whether you choose to join us for the retreat or not, um, the goal today was to, my intent was to challenge you to go inward and to ask yourself some questions that maybe we just haven't asked in a while. And if you join us, awesome. We're going to facilitate the whole thing. If not, if you're not joining us, make a commitment to start taking action on the process on your own. With our number one core value is impact. So when we look at our compass for how we make decisions, is this going to help you? Are we going to make an impact by helping you get clarity on your goals and start having a relationship with them? That is what this is about. So here's my question. What's one thing you can do based on this webinar? that would make this a great ROI, make it a great investment of your time. If you can only do one thing following this webinar, what would it be? Yes, Wendy, the answer is yes. Start, so Mike, what would that mean? How would you start? What's that domino that you would knock down? Prepare some questions, love it. If you can only ask one question, what would it be? Start journaling. Perfect, Rhonda. Love that. My wife started doing that 20 minutes a day. Been a game changer for her. Her doctor actually encouraged her to start journaling. <laughs> I was like, I love that. Logging into my website and doing the first exercise. Perfect. Reread the one thing. Yeah, it's, it's interesting, Peter. I do it regularly. Shocker. Um, because I'm always in a different season of life. It, it lands with me in different ways. And it just, it goes deeper. Um, I enjoy doing that. 15 minutes per day to start the day on focus. Love it. Jamie, if you did that legitimately, 
if for the next year, 15 minutes to start the day, you blocked to focus on your one thing, it would change your life. No joke. Not hyperbole. Life-changing. It's cool. All right, folks. Thanks for investing your time with us. We really appreciate you. You guys are awesome. For those of you that are joining us for the retreat, we're so excited. We can't wait to be with you guys. We're, we're like, what, 10 weeks out, Kaylin? We're CS. <laughs> yep. It's um, season. season. Yep. And, and for those of you guys, if, if you are considering this, if you have any questions about this, email events at the one thing.com. Like we said, early bird pricing expires today. So tomorrow the prices do go up. So if you're even on the fence, we, we talked to you through the, the, the guarantee. So you do have the ability to secure the pricing today. And if you need to think it through, we've got your back. We want you to be able to lock in the pricing right now while it's the lowest that it can be. All right, folks, have a good race, rest of the day.